Hi guys, welcome to ASI 2024 day 25. Six more days to go. Um, I'm super grateful for joining with us thus far. Thank you for um, staying tuned. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for dropping your comments um, on the WhatsApp group. Thank you so much for being active. Thank you so much for holding it up. Maybe I should just leave this speech till the last day. But sincerely, my heart is so full of gratitude. If you, every one of you watching this video, if you do not um, yield to the voice I heard, I mean, it would have been maybe difficult for me to do this, but I'm grateful to God that he has helped us thus far to do this. And I pray for strength. So hold on to everything we've learned, that it will not just be the usual Bible reading, but that everything we've learned, the germs, the wisdom we've learned from this book, will be permanent and will make use of it for the betterment and the progress of our lives in the name of Jesus. We are looking at Proverbs chapter 25 today and I so much love I so much love this um, chapter because it unveils a lot of things that seem quite um, enigmatic things that are quite puzzling. It like, kind of explains it and it starts from verse 2 it says, God is praised I'm reading the CEV version, it says God is praised for being mysterious while rulers are praised for explaining mysteries. The King James Version says that it is the um Kwame says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and it is the wisdom is it the it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and the glory of kings to search it out. So one thing about God is that God will continue to hide things, is mysterious in his way, but it is the glory of kings to search out things, to shout out to search out God's ways, to explain mysteries. So if there is anyone who finds anything mysterious and you're able to unveil it, it's a glory to you. Just the same way it is to the glory of God um, that he keeps things mysterious. He says, who can fully understand the thoughts of a ruler? They reach beyond the sky and go deep into the earth. Silver must be purified before it can be used to make something of value. Evil people must be removed before anyone can rule with justice. And this kind of explains even what is happening in my country, Nigeria, right now, regarding our political space and everything. You know, before anyone can rule with justice, evil has to be totally eradicated. Not just in Nigeria, in any kind of um, political setting or political gathering, any kind of gathering where there is leadership or where there are leaders. Until evil is totally eradicated, it can be difficult for justice to rule. So when you find evil prevailing in a place where people sincerely desire justice, just know that it's because there are still some evil lurking at one corner. And that's why it's difficult for justice to prevail. So just the same way silver must be purified before it can make something of value. The same way evil people must be removed before anyone can rule with justice. If, as long as there are still evil people, nobody can rule with justice. But once all the evil people have been eradicated, then people can rule with justice. Then verse 6 says, don't try to seem important in the court of a ruler. It is better for the ruler to give you a high position than for you to be embarrassed in front of royal officials. Be sure you are right. Now, this makes a lot of sense. Yoruba, there is a proverb in Yoruba that says, Ile somi dunjo yelo, like being at home is much more better than having um, a title or whatnot. But what I want you to really derive from this is the fact that um, when you are when you are in a new place where you get to a place a gathering say okay the way the world is right now um with what's this thing called with different events videos uh, i said videos conferences and all of that you know you see people you see some young men that are papas in their fellowship because they invited you somewhere you now go and sit in the front row why don't you sit at the back and wait until they invite you to the high table I've seen people who invite themselves to the front row, like where VIPs are meant to be seated and reserved seats. I've seen people who have gone there themselves and they've sent them back. And it's always so embarrassing. So why don't you just stay behind? If you're someone they would like to honor by putting on the table, they will invite you. So this is not just um, something that you need to take and drop. It's something that you need to inculcate into your daily lifestyle. When you get anywhere, a new place, if you are not invited, if you are not honored, it's better you stay behind. Don't honor yourself all in the name of, oh, you too, you are, a, you are an important person where you're coming from. Nobody knows you. 
just take it as that. If you try and say, oh, people know me, I have so so followers on Instagram. Your followers are not in that event. So, the embarrassment, and by the time the embarrassment will come, your followers are not, that are not in, that, in that event, they will say. So, it's better you, um, it's better you give yourself the right position that you should stay and then let them welcome you, let them encourage you so you are not embarrassed. Okay, the verse says, Be sure you are right before you sue someone, or you might lose your case and be embarrassed. That's very straightforward. Then, um, verse 11 says, The right word at the right time is like precious gold set in silver. When you speak the right word at the right time, it's like precious gold set in silver. You know, when I was in secondary school, the first principal of my secondary school once said that it's good for you to have a positive mental attitude. We call it PME. You know, when you say the right word at the right time, it seemed like Oh, you have the entire solution of the entire world right in your hands. It's that's just the way it seems like. It seems like you have the entire solution, like you know how to do things, but it's not really you. It's the wisdom of God embedded in you. So always know how to say the right word and at the right time. Not just you saying the right word at the right time, but ask God for the wisdom to speak rightly when you need to keep short, learn to keep short. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to keep short when you need to keep short. When you need to speak, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to speak when you need to speak. Because those are the things that would help you whenever you're confused or whenever you find yourself in any mess. But the major thing is that the right word at the right time is like a precious gold set in silver. The verse 20 says, listening to good advice is worth much more than jewelry made of gold. Okay, then verse 17 says something. Um, Don't visit friends too often or they'll get tired of it and start hating you. My friend, my fr anytime I go to my friend's house, she say feel at home. Anytime I go to my friend's house, she say feel at home. Anytime I go to my friend's house, she say feel at home. So you now started leaving you one pants, uh, one leg of slippers, uh, one t-shirt, one trouser. You now started leaving it in your friend's house. And then whenever you come to your friend's house, you not go for two, three days. Uma table. <laughs> you know the meaning of Uma table. They will drag you. You get humiliated. So don't visit your friends too often, not just your friend, family members, parents, parents-in-laws. Don't visit your children too much once they are married. I'm not saying, am I saying you should not visit your your, uh, your children because they are married? No. But don't make it too much. If not, you get humiliated. That is where you just spring from. Uh, my daughter, my, my daughter-in-law is now saying, I hate my mother-in-law. She's trying to control my husband, this, this and that. Well, if mother-in-laws can maintain their territory, they visit, you know, once in a while, down once in a while. The daughter-in-law would have no choice and to treat his mother-in-law like, like a king. So, you also know what you should do. Don't visit people too much. When you visit people too much, they wait it and they visit against you. The scripture says it. And so it would happen. Don't see it as, oh, this girl is not even accommodating. Oh, this boy is not even accommodating. When you visit too much, people will eat you. But when you visit once in a while, that your visit will be treasured. Okay? Then, um... Okay, I, I skipped verse 15 and 16. Verse 15 says, patient and gentle talk can convince a ruler and overcome any problem. That's much straightforward. I'm not going to dwell much on that because of our time. Verse 16 says, eating too much honey can make you sick. When you eat too much sweet things, it can make you sick. Can you see? So it's not just a medical thing. It's even in the scripture. that when you take something that is too sweet, it can make you sick. I'm trying to look at the KJV version of that. Verse 16. Hold on, let me check the KJV version. The KJV version says that, have you found pleasures? No, sorry. I'm reading the Amplified. Verse, uh, Version says, Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. And Fried Version says, Have you found pleasure sweet like honey? Eat only as much as is sufficient for you, lest being filled with it will make you vomit. So not just honey. When you find yourself in a sweet place, ensure that you don't get yourself drunk by it. Because when you get yourself drunk by pleasures of life, it will choke you up and then you will vomit. And vomit means that you you have no choice than to let go of everything because it will choke you. Okay? Verse 20 says that... Okay, verse 19 says that a friend you can't trust in times of trouble is like having a toothache or a sore foot. Verse 20 says singing to someone in deep sorrow is like pouring vinegar in an open court. I mean, how will someone be in sorrow and you be singing? Be careful. That one is straightforward enough. Then um, verse 25 says good news from far away refreshes like cold water when you're thirsty. Good news like far away refreshes like cold water when you're thirsty. So whenever you receive good news, I know one thing is for sure that there's no one who receives good news and feels bad. There's no one who receives good news and the heart is filled with sorrow. No, it's not possible. Good news 
um, is something that is good. It refreshes the mind, it refreshes the soul. So try as much as possible to always share good news instead of evil or bad news. Sharing evil or bad news is, you know what I mean by that. I'm not going to waste my time. So the last verse of chapter 25 says that losing self-control leaves you as helpless as a city without war. When you leave self-control, you are vulnerable to attack. When you do have self-control, you are vulnerable to anything that you are just an any ghost kind of person, which you need to avoid as much as you can. So ensure that you have self-control and you don't lose it. So I hope you've gathered enough gems from Proverbs chapter 25. I hope to see you tomorrow for Proverbs chapter 26. Remain blessed. Bye.